Texans preseason continues this Saturday as the Houston Texans take on the San Francisco 49ers. Now, last week, the starters didn't get much playing time aside from a, a few names like Aaron Colvin and Kareem Jackson, Kevin Johnson. They probably saw the most playing time out of the starters, but most of the starters hardly even played. So this week, we will probably see an increased role for the starters. And hopefully we get to see more Deshaun, because last week he literally only had one passing attempt. It was a four-yard completion. Not that there's anything wrong with it, I mean, it was just preseason week one. Now, preseason week two, starters play for most of the first quarter, if not the whole first quarter, so we'll definitely see more Deshaun. Now, will we get to see some of these star players that sat out? Last week, like a J.J. Watt, D.J. Reader, Tyron Matthew, DeAndre Hopkins, Wolf Fuller, Whitney Merciless, Bernardrick McKinney. Like, will we get to see them? I think we will see them some. I don't think we'll see them a lot. I think they'll try to ease them in there. And Jadavion Clowney, I don't really think we're going to see. Now we're really going to get into the things we should really be looking for. Number one, the tight ends. Jordan Aikens had a pretty good game last week. Now, can he continue that? Can he build on that? He had two receptions, two touchdowns. I want to say it was in consecutive drives, the second and third drive. So, can Jordan Aikens keep that up? Can he be a legitimate starting option for the Texans if he keeps it up? And then we also got Jordan Thomas. Jordan Thomas was in there last week versus the Chiefs. He was in there. He just didn't get any targets. He was mostly in there as a blocker. The reason behind it, from what I heard on Twitter, is that the Texans are already comfortable with Jordan Thomas as a receiver. So they were just working him in, in the run game to run block to better improve his game so I guess maybe it's good signs but I, w I would really like to see the Texans actually target Jordan Thomas so I'm definitely going to be looking out for that the next thing Lamar Miller Lamar Miller only played one drive he had like I want to say like three carries he looked better he looked more explosive now was that just a one game thing or was that actually the version of Lamar Miller we're going to get this year we got to keep an eye on him, see how he does. The next thing, offensive line play. The offensive line in the run game, I feel like they all did really, really well. Can they keep it up this week against the 49ers? The 49ers do have a pretty talented front. They have Eric Armstead. They have Solomon Thomas, who they picked up last year. Of course, Ruben Foster, DeForest Buckner. So they have a pretty talented front. Will they will their starters play? I don't know who is in the play and who isn't. But if they do play, the Texans offensive line is gonna have some you know good players to go against. So let's see if the offensive line play can continue in the run game and also in the pass protection. I think Davenport did pretty good last week in everything, pass protection, run blocking. Can he keep it up? I thought Sean Troy Henderson did good in the run game, and he did okay in the pass game. There was like a few, like two or three plays where he did kind of allow some pressure. Can Sean Troy Henderson do better this week? We'll have to wait and see. And the next thing, Kevin Johnson and Aaron Colvin. Although they did get a little bit more playing time than the regular starters, they didn't really target Aaron Colvin or Kevin Johnson like at all. So, well, I think they targeted Aaron Colvin once, but it was a pretty bad pass. But they didn't really get targeted, so we didn't really get to see them in action. So hopefully this week, a better quarterback in Jimmy Garoppolo, he actually tests them and we'll be able to see what they can do. I'm pretty sure Colvin will, will be fine. 
Kevin Johnson is rumored to be doing really good in camp, but it's one of those things where you kind of have to see it in the game to actually believe it, you know? So hopefully we get to see some of that. And the next thing, Duke Edge of Four. You guys know Duke Edge of Four just dominated the Chiefs last year, their first stringers and their second stringers. Will Duke Edge of Four play against the first stringers this week? It all really depends if Jadavion Clowney or Whitney Merciless play. I'm pretty sure Merciless will play. Clowney, I'm not too sure if they'll play him. If he doesn't, pretty sure Duke Edge of Four gets to start. And that's good because the Niners have some pretty good tackles. They got Joe Staley on the left side and they have a rookie, Mike McGlinchey, on the right side. So... I think it might be a better test than Mitchell Schwartz. Even though Mitchell Schwartz is considered one of the better right tackles in the league, it, I was honestly shocked that Duke Edge of Four was able to beat him so easily. So, you know, we'll get to see Duke Edge of Four again, hopefully against the ones. And let's see if he can continue his dominance in the preseason. And hopefully that translates into the regular season because it all starts in training camp and then it transitions over to preseason and then from preseason to regular season. So hopefully. He can keep this up. Next, we got Josh Thornton. Now, you guys know who he is. Number 36, the one that pretty much closed out the game. I think he was probably, or he was straight up the best DB we had out there after the, the ones went out. The secondary was just getting shredded. It, it was just terrible. They were getting shredded by third string quarterbacks and fourth string quarterbacks. Like, it was bad. But this guy was able to come through in the clutch, pretty much seal the game, had three beautiful pass breakups late in the game. So I think Josh has really earned himself a second look. I think there's a guy we should really keep our eye on because the Texans secondary, well, the Texans corners, they don't really have much depth. It's just pretty much Jonathan Joseph, who is really questionable, Kevin Johnson, Aaron Colvin. After that, you got Johnson Batamosi, but he's really just a special teamer. You got Jermaine Kelly, the rookie, but he's a rookie, a seventh round pick, so you really don't know. So definitely keep an eye on him. And then we have to watch the special teams. Last week, I think the special teams looked really, really good. And yes, I understand it's just preseason, but if you've been following the Texans for a while, you guys know that this special teams has been terrible since ages ago, man. Like, it feels like this special teams has been bad since the Texans became a thing. Alright, the next thing. Brandon Whedon versus Joe Webb round two. Okay, look. I think Brandon Whedon is the straight up better passer. Like, straight up. Brandon Whedon looked amazing out there. Shredding the Chiefs defense. Now, Joe Webb, though. Joe Webb has two things that Brandon Whedon will never, ever, ever be able to do. One, the mobility. Like, Joe Webb was running around kind of making preseason look fun with the third stringers and fourth stringers. Like, he was just running around, avoiding pressure, doing all sorts of things. Which, again, is something Brandon Whedon just cannot do. And another thing Brandon Whedon absolutely can't do is play special teams, so... Joe Webb definitely has some value on the team. Is it really a quarterback competition? I don't know because I have heard that Brandon Whedon is the clear favorite to win that second spot, which isn't bad in my opinion because Brandon Whedon, again, he's shown that he can move the offense before. He showed it again this past week in the preseason. So I wouldn't be mad, but I do think Joe Webb still has a chance to make the team because of his special teams contributions and yeah next thing the backup running backs I guess Tremaine Pope Tyler Irvin and Alfred Blue last week I thought Alfred Blue looked terrible how will he do this week Tyler Irvin didn't get much playing time Tremaine Pope got most of the shine I guess after Lamar Miller so I do think Tremaine Pope has a better chance to make the team than Tyler Irvin and Alfred Blue do, but I'm pretty sure 
O'Brien's still in love with Alfred Blue and Tyler Irvin, so how is this really going to work out? Are they all going to make the team until Deontay Foreman gets back and then one of them gets cut? I don't know. And two other positions you must watch is the backup and third string offensive line and secondary because these two positions are pretty much without depth so if any I guess unknown player is gonna make the team it's gonna be in these positions because quite frankly I think we have no depth in those positions which is totally fine because realistically you can't have depth everywhere or quality depth everywhere I mean look at any team Every team has like one or two units where they completely lack depth. But if you really think about it, the reason we don't have any in these positions is because we don't really even have the starters there, you know? So how can we have quality backups when we don't even have quality starters? And it's a process, you know? So Brian Gain just gave us quality backups for wide receiver. So, it's definitely a process. Maybe something Brian Gain can work on next offseason. I really don't think we can get quality backups this offseason unless, like, some players completely come out of nowhere and just impress, which I highly doubt it. But it is definitely something we have to watch. Hopefully, we're able to get the better of the backups, I guess, and keep them on the team. Because what I saw last week against the Chiefs, I, I wasn't too impressed by the backups in those positions. Anyways, that's all I really have for you guys today. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.